Hi, and welcome back to The Greenhouse, where this week we're looking at the groundbreaking work being done in biofuels. Our next stop is Fort Collins, Colorado, where researchers are developing a truly green biofuel. Most people have heard of using corn to produce ethanol fuel, and scientists have also created biodiesel from soybeans and canola oil. But what about pond scum? Colorado State University and its Engines and Energy Conversion Lab have co-founded Solex Biofuels to research and develop ways to commercialize algae as a biofuel. Interestingly enough, it's, it's not a plant or an animal. It's actually prehistoric to the kind of plant-animal shift. And the interesting thing about algae is that it's the fastest growing organism in the world. Algae is also extremely diverse with over 100,000 different species, most of which produce oil. We now have an organism that grows quickly and produces oil. And that's the basis for looking at algae as a biofuel. Algae also need little to survive, relying mainly on sunlight and the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide, or CO2. We're taking a greenhouse gas out of the atmosphere and using that greenhouse gas to create a fuel. Thus, future sites of algae production include land near large producers of CO2, such as power plants and breweries. And land use is where other biocrops fall short in terms of fuel production versus food production. What we see is that as you use a lot of ethanol, you drive up the price of food products uh, as you compete over the, the availability of corn. Unlike corn, algae is not a food and does not need arable land to grow, but it is also important to consider yield. For corn, using one acre of land for one year, you can yield about 100 gallons of oil. On that same acre of land, over one year, algae will yield between four and 5,000 gallons of oil. So you don't need uh, arable land, you have huge yield. And then finally, the thing that's really important for us in Colorado and the western states is water usage. With traditional biocrops, it takes about 10,000 gallons of water to produce one gallon of biodiesel. But despite being an aquatic species, algae's water demands are small. We're using on the order of you know, five gallons of water for a gallon of biodiesel. And that's because we take the water resources that we have and we actually recycle those. Also being recycled are the waste from processing the algae. The leftover products can be turned into a highly nutritious animal feed. So as far as yield, land use, and water consumption, algae has uh, tremendous advantages over uh, traditional biocrops. But turning algae into a biofuel is complex, and Solex is putting a product on the market that needs to compete directly with fossil fuels. That's the technology that Solex and CSU are working on, driving down the cost and energy requirements of the feedstock uh, and making it an affordable alternative. Right now, Solex has two test sites with three large photobioreactors where the algae grows. These reactors are about one-fifth the size of full-scale reactors, shown here in an artist's rendering. But to gauge the future of this industry, we must consider its past. When this technology was created in the 1970s, gas prices were high. Then, during the 80s, prices fell and these technologies were shelved. Today, we are in the same position as gas prices were very high and have now fallen. The question will be, do we once again shelve these technologies um, and wait for the next shock in prices? Or do we, as a society and as a country, develop these technologies to the point that they are economically viable? 